G'day GDL peoples, we continue the series on creating an automatic fall label that reads the roof pitch of the roof it's attached to. In this chapter I work through setting up the stretchy arrow for the ramp symbol. There are some difficulties along the way because labels behave slightly differently to standard objects. But we get there and there are some good pointers along the way, pun not intended. Here we go. change this to a slab one in five that's what we want let's make it one in a hundred there we go one in a hundred good well that's doing what we want however when it comes to a ramp i still want it to be a gradient but i want that arrow to be able to stretch to fit the entire ramp so this should really be down in my other subroutine down here. Defining my arrow length and my arrow width is part of my label, not part of the content. So if it's a roof or if it's a slab, then it will draw what we've currently defined. But if it's a ramp, we want it to behave differently. So I want arrow length to be my A dimension. Arrow length equals A. We want line two, line two minus, I can probably do the same thing, yeah? Let's see, I'll do the same thing. But now what I want to do is add in my dynamic hotspot, which is, do I have an unID yet? I do have an unID. UnID equals, let's go hotspot two. We'll go zero, zero. We're changing our A parameter. This is our base hotspot. And if we have a look at graphical editing using hotspots, graphical editing using hotspots, got our one, which is our length type editing base hotspot. I've done an episode on dynamic hotspots. You can have a look at that. But what we want here is we want attribute 256J9, which is editable base hotspot. So what does that mean? Normally, you just edit your length in one direction, but with an editable base hotspot, you can edit it in two directions. I'll show you. So we'll go one plus 256, it's our base hotspot. Then we want our moving hotspot. So it will be A. And then we want our reference hotspot, which is in the opposite direction. Oops. X, I want it in my X axis. And that'll be three, which will be our reference hotspot. So at the moment, my cursor is in the middle here. I want to come to this end before I do this hotspot execution. So I'll go add to A divided by two, and then I'll delete that transformation on 81 oops add to add to requires an x and a y good okay i've added it the wrong way let's just put in my axis see what's going on right i want to add minus x i want to add minus now I can stretch this end. No, I can't. Won't let me. It'll stretch that end. That's not what I want. That's not how I want it to behave. Why is it doing that? Because I'm drawing from the middle, what do I want to happen? Let's just do this. Get rid of that. Why is that not working? So to show you what this is actually meant to do, I'll just create a test object to show you what's actually meant to happen. So labels have different behavior, clearly. Let's create my unID in my master script. Throw these into my 2D script. So I've got my hotspots. Oops, that should be zero. And that shouldn't be divided by two. All right, so let's change that to zero and that to zero and that to that. Zero, A. Does that work? No, it doesn't.
So see how that's not stretching? What is meant to happen is if I just place an object here, BDB test. Where are you? Here we are. Why is that not showing now? Ah, there's no arrow length, that's why. A. There it is. So if I stretch this end, it'll stretch. And if I grab this end, it'll stretch. So I can stretch either end of this object. But clearly, labels behave differently. So I'm going to have to rethink how I want this to behave. So I can't have a stretchable hotspot there because it don't work. Works at that end, but not at the other end. So I'll have to turn that off. Let's just make it a visible hotspot. So I've got a dot there. So visual feedback to say it's not a dynamic one. I'll put that at one end of the ramp, stretch that to the other end of the ramp. I'll make my text. I'll add to a divided by two. And then I'll put in my text, which is here. It's right at the zero, zero point. Uh, to keep that there, maybe I will. Okay, maybe I'll add this after all. I will go add two minus a divided by two, zero. Dull one here. Get rid of that. Save. This will jump. But now it's where I want it to be. Okay, so if I stretch that. No, that's not how I want it to behave. I want this to stay where it is. So if that's the case, then I need to put that. I'll put it in here for now, just down the end. And I'll put that down here. And that will be, I'll add A to. Right, don't need that. Let's get rid of that. So if it's a roof or a slab, It'll drop into here. It'll draw my hotspots in the middle of my hotline. It'll draw my line. It'll draw the arrowhead at the correct end. And we're done. And then we draw the text right in the middle. Okay. If it's a ramp, then I need to be drawing it from the end. And then I put the text halfway along. I'm still going to have to correct for this. But let's see how that works. Right, so now when I drag that to there, I want to be able to drag that out to the whole length. Done. Good. That's how I want it to behave. So if my ramp changes length, I can stretch that. Or if it changes length the other way, I can drag that into position and stretch that to suit. Okay. In this case, let's just double check. Roof. So the arrow's at this end, so I still want the arrow at that end. So if that's the case, I want this to be outside of what type of arrow it is. And I want arrow length and arrow width. I want to draw a bigger arrow for this. I'll deal with that in a minute. So I want to add two. I want the same thing here. So this is arrow line, and this is arrow head. Let's just see what happens. It's slightly different. So, good. Let's rotate this. Look at that. We don't want that to happen, do we? That's no good. I rotate it, and it doesn't rotate. What happens if I rotate this 180? Going the wrong way. What happens if I change any of this stuff? So labels behave in a pretty funky manner sometimes. Uh, I'm going to have to put back in my full note here. Figure out what's going on. Let's just leave that like that so I don't get confused. What's that meant to be? That's pointing that way. So the arrow is pointing the right way. Actually, let's get rid of these and put in something I know works. Right, so that... Yeah, that's good. That's good. 
I would want that to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would want that to be there. Okay, so it's meant to be directional like that. That's my end point. That's my end point. They're all going the wrong way. Every single one. Interesting. So, therefore, I come down here. I want it to be the opposite of arrow mole. Now, I can't do not arrow mole because that will not return what I'm after. So what I'll do is I'll just go multiplied by minus one. So if it's one, it'll become negative one. If it's minus one, it'll become one. Yeah, so that should work. Let's have a look. Ah, uh, can't do that. Maybe I can do it that way. Ah, stupid. Right, there we go. That's that one. But my text is off the wrong side. Let's go minus A2 by RML. There we go. Now my text is on the correct side. My arrowhead works. All right, let's get rid of these. Get rid of the stuff I don't need. So that is a ramp and it should be going the other way. There we go. Like so. My ramp is going up. Let's get rid of this. So I've got my correct text and I want a bigger arrowhead. So I will say I'll be a bit big. Alrighty. And I think the last thing I need is a hotspot in the middle. Just check to make sure it works if I'm going the other way, and I am. Excellent. Alrighty. I've used this label in a project I'm designing, just a house design. I rolled it out and I've used it all three types. So here it is on the roof plan, and I'll just place a new one. It's full label is selected. And I'll place it on my roof. It's facing the wrong way. If I want to mirror it, it's not mirroring. Why not? It's because you need to make sure with labels you have custom angle set. So under symbol label, custom angle. And make sure your fixed angle is unchecked as well. So that will now go where I tell it to. So if I have fixed angle checked like that, and I rotate my view, the label will rotate with my view. But this one has fixed angle unchecked and it stays in the position I put it in. So it's the roof fall works. This is my slab fall attached to a roof used as a slab. That works. And this is my ramp label attached again to a roof acting as a ramp. So functionally, it's working the way I want it. There are a few improvements that I think I could make to it. One is it could do with a background fill. So this has got a nice fill, masking out the texture in the background. Could do the same with this. Sometimes your roofs have a negative incline to achieve what you need. So I need to get rid of that negative value here. And I want the options to turn the angle on and off and also any text on and off. So I'll do that. Now I could open it up and edit it in here just by going Control Shift and O, opens it up for editing. But good practice is to edit your objects in a quarantined environment so that any mistakes you may make don't get rolled out and ruin projects. I've had that happen before. So we'll go to our dedicated file and we'll make our changes in here. Okay, told you we'd get there. That's the ramp symbol dealt with. Next, I code the opaque fill and the label frame, which requires working out how wide and how high your text is. There's also some other useful tips and tricks thrown in. So I'll see you there.